Teens used to spend their days working in dangerous conditions, helping out with the chores and finding their own entertainment with next to no available resources. Today, they spend most of their time either at school or in their homes eyeballing their phones or computer screens. Today, we'll discuss just what brought about these changes over the decades in this episode of The Infographics Show, The Lifestyle of Teenagers Over a Century. In the early 1900s, similarly to today, not everyone had the same lifestyle, and where and how you lived depended on income. Overall, America was becoming more urbanized with growing cities, but most families lived in the country and many were in poverty. Those in country homes would often go to the bathroom in an outhouse and lack access to running water. In contrast, the richer segment of society would have hot water, toilets, and bathrooms for their convenience. If poor families resided in the city, they might live in something called a tenement house, where several families would use the same bathroom or outhouse outdoors. Day-to-day -day life of teens at this time was filled with work and some play. In the 1900s, only half of those from the age of 5 to 19 went to school, and most discontinued their studies by the 8th grade. Many, starting at a relatively young age, would work instead to contribute to the family income. In fact, 18% of workers in America were younger than 16 in the year 1900. In the cities, work could be dirty and dangerous, like coal mine labor or stressful, and similarly dangerous like factory work. City youth would also sell newspapers or shine shoes to make some money. Manual labor didn't end with the job either. Children to younger adults were also expected to help with the chores as well. Boys would do things such as shovel coal into the furnace to keep the home heated. Girls would have tasks such as cleaning or helping with the cooking. However, there was still time for entertainment, though many activities were quite different from those of today. There were no television, no computers, no widespread use of radio at this point in history. Obviously, there were no cell phones either. In fact, having a phone at all was a luxury that only the wealthiest could afford, and it was a shared line where anyone nearby could hear your conversation. In other words, it would not be used to gossip or socialize. For those reasons, young Americans were pretty much responsible for finding their own fun. Indoors, they would do things like play piano, sing, and dance. Outside, those in cities would explore by bicycle or with roller skates. Virtually no one had a car, and it wasn't until 1910 that Henry Ford mass-produced the automobile and as a consequence made them affordable to the general public. Before that time, most would travel by horses and buggies, streetcars, train, boat, or bicycle. The 1910s to 1920s saw continued innovation and industrialization, though it wasn't until the 20s that manufacturing overtook agriculture as the country's main industry. This was also when those between the age of 8 to 14 were legally required to go to school across the country for the first time in America's history. Those living in rural areas often had a shorter school year so that they could also work on the farm, and when they did attend classes, it was in one room for all grades. In contrast, city schools separated students by grade. Most didn't go on to finish secondary school as the beginning of the 20s were prosperous and they could easily find a good paying job without a high school diploma. The 20s are when many believed the concept of the teenager was first starting to be born, though the term was not yet used. Before this, there were simply children of different ages and adults. Part of the reason sociologists believed that teenagers were starting to be recognized as their own group was because of school, which changed them from just someone of a certain age, not so very different from those a little younger or older, to someone who belonged to his or her own unique culture. School took them from their families and combined them in groups of similarly aged youth in a closed environment completely separate from the outside world. Here is where students began to form their own way of speech, accepted clothing, musical preferences, and other behaviors that were typically at odds with adult role models, specifically their parents. In other words, teenagers were becoming distinctly different from younger children and older adults. This was truer than ever before when consolidated high schools started popping up around the country, the first which was opened in 1922. Further, it was between 1908 and 1927 that Ford's Model T dropped to a low enough cost that as many as 15 million were sold. As a consequence, more and more people had access to one. This is what some historians claim brought about the concept of the independent teen we still recognize today. Before cars, teens typically hung out under the watchful eye of parents. Courtships turned from an old-fashioned informal affair and hanging out as a group, needing permission for something as simple as a moment alone, to an aloneness without restriction. Many considered this period a type of sexual revolution. No longer were people waiting to tie the knot before fooling around. 
and they were also dating others further away as they could travel greater distances in their automobiles. In addition to attending school daily and a new sense of independence and freedom, entertainment teenagers could enjoy was evolving at this time as well. The first radio station with scheduled broadcasting began on November 2, 1920. Many would also go to the cinema more than once a week since it was considered a cheap form of entertainment. While there were silent pictures in the early 1920s, it wasn't until 1927 that the first picture with sound came out, called The Jazz Singer. The Jazz Singer was just one example of the music culture that was taking America by storm. The 20s were known as the Jazz Age for a reason and youth across the country were dancing the Charleston with girls cutting their hair short and wearing lower cut and shorter hemmed dresses and boys donning baggy pants. The 1930s brought about the Great Depression. Teenagers could no longer find jobs easily. There was an even greater emphasis placed on education and high school enrollment went up. This was also the time of the school bus, which meant an end to many one-room schools in rural areas as students can now be transported to schools elsewhere. This provided a more equitable education for all, no matter their socioeconomic background. In this decade, Congress finally passed well overdue legislation meant to protect youth from abuse in the workplace. The Fair Labor Standards Act made it illegal to employ anyone younger than 16 in the fields of mining or manufacturing. Youth had to be at least 16 to work during the hours of school, 14 to work some jobs after school, and 18 to hold an exceptionally dangerous job. However, despite these protections, it was a rough time due to the floundering economy. Many young people lived on the streets and engaged in criminal activities. However, it was not all bad. Toward the end of this decade was when tiny television sets were first sold, though it wasn't until much later that extensive commercial broadcasting began. The 30s to the 50s were still the time of the radio. It was the way people would listen to music, hear the news, and other types of entertaining programming. Instead of teens scheduling their extracurriculars around TV, they scheduled around their favorite radio show. They enjoyed other things as well. Superman comics were all the rage by June of 1938. The 30s were also when jazz had changed to big band swing. Teens were doing the jitterbug dance in a way of rebellious movement to music that allowed them to push back against the middle class conventions. The 1940s were when the word teenager with a hyphen between teen and ager began to appear in print. Though the idea had been growing since the 20s with the advent of school and cars, it was post-depression where it was a formally recognized life stage, distinct from any other. Life magazine wrote a 1944 article trying to define what teenage meant for its millions of readers. It described a teenage American girl as one who finds the most important thing in the world is to be one of a crowd of other girls and to act and speak and dress exactly as they do. Further, they stated that teenage girls were out of touch with the outside world and in fact all but unaware of the war. Instead, their focus was on clothing such as sweaters and loafers, having long hair and rimmed glasses, painting their nails, moron-based jokes, stuffed animals, and boys. Clearly, this must have been somewhat of an exaggeration, but they made their point. The time was quite different for boys who were sent off to war. Many of those left behind tried to help where they could by collecting materials that could be recycled and used for military equipment. Even once the conflict ended, recovery took time, and when society needed a break from reality, they had several distractions available. TV was growing in popularity, and for those who lived close enough to a station, there were many different types of commercial programming that became available by the end of the decade. In addition to entertainment, newscasts were also aired at this time. What were once radio programs became spin-off TV programs, such as The Jack Benny Show. As a result, network radio drastically declined. The mid-40s brought about the end of the swing craze and made way for bebop. Rhythm and blues music and vocal musicians became more popular and eventually morphed into the rock and roll of the 50s. Music and dancing continued to be a way for the young generation to express themselves and break free of the restrictions held by greater society. Dresses became shorter, and boys wore zoot suits with jackets padded at the shoulders and pants wide on top that tapered at the ankles. The 1950s saw great economic growth and prosperity. Wages increased, including those for older working teens, giving them the freedom to make their own purchases. Many teenagers and their families moved from a dirty and chaotic life in the city to mass-produced homes in suburbia. Following the movement of people, fast food restaurants and shopping centers sprang up nearby. The second McDonald's opened its doors to Americans in 1955. 
fancy appliances that had only before been offered to the wealthiest were available to the middle class. This included things such as refrigerators, televisions, and range-top ovens. The first color TV was broadcast in June of 1951, and Leave it to Beaver and The Twilight Zone started airing in 1957 and 1959. By 1955, half of America owned a television set. Rock and roll became the latest craze, and Elvis Presley rose to fame with hip gyrations that were the ultimate shock to the older generations. Teens would go out dancing on Saturday nights to jive along or listen to music on jukeboxes at diners. Girls around this time would wear long skirts with socks, and their hair either up or in curls. Later on, beehives were quite popular. They would also wear clothes that were form-fitting in imitation of Marilyn Monroe, while boys were either clean-cut, bikers, or adopted in Elvis Presley style. The 50s and 60s were also a time when teenage couples found privacy and entertainment at the drive-in theater. It was not uncommon for teenagers to smoke cigarettes as well, though other types of drugs were virtually unheard of. Ultimately, lax discipline following the war and the influence of rock and roll, combined with ever-increasing freedom resulted in some problems. This environment gave way to the rise of some young gangs. The 1960s brought about cable TV and access to a choice of hundreds of different channels. The Beatles were introduced to the US via this route on The Ed Sullivan Show in 1964. Boys tried to simulate the look of the Beatles with colorful clothing purchases. Overall, teens were making a lot of money and had cash to burn, so businesses began to target them as prospective buyers. Girls would buy short miniskirts and revealing tops and style their hair long. Tie-dye and bell-bottoms rose in popularity as well, though jeans were becoming the most frequently worn pants, particularly Levi's. Because of the past war as well as the threat of nuclear weapons, teens at this time had a live life to the fullest mentality. Woodstock Music and Art Fair was a large celebration attended by 450,000 people in 1969, and there was not one incident of violence. In the 1970s, parents had fewer kids and invested more in the children they had. The top 20% of society began to spend over twice as much on enrichment activities for their families, like summer camps and sports. However, teens seemed to be less optimistic than they were in the 60s. Many had trouble finding jobs and unemployment was on the rise. However, they still enjoyed their music, TV, and self-expression. Musicians such as the Sex Pistols and the Ramones, as well as TV such as Saturday Night Fever, resulted in clothing trends of disco clothes, platform shoes, flared pants, and crop tops. Camouflage was also quite common. So was the creation of the punk complete with glitter. More and more young male stars led to youth having role models that they could look up to and try to emulate. This was when the concept of the teeny bopper was born. The 80s brought about video cassette recorders and allowed people to record programs or watch movies of their own choosing within their homes. This was also the time when video games became a widespread form of entertainment. The first Macintosh computer was released in 1984. The 80s were also the years that began the importance of being cool via display of the logo. Teens were willing to spend their own or their parents' money on high-priced items that came with a distinctive emblem indicating its exact brand. This continued into the following decade as well. With Madonna's rise to fame, many also copied her style. Clothing was increasingly unisex, with people rocking the punk look, designer clothes, and sportswear as society became more interested in health. In fact, teens would often work out with others and wear fitness gear both in and out of gyms. Entertainment was, of course, as important as ever. Teens would spend their weekends clubbing and dancing to hip-hop or rap. They would also watch TV or movies on a daily basis. Unfortunately, many were also turning to drugs. Crack, heroin, and diseases such as AIDS and HIV, thought to be spread through the sharing of needles, became more prevalent. A new focus was placed on safe sex to protect against the disease. The 90s for teens and their families was a time for TV that left its mark on many aspects of their lives. While only thousands of homes had a television set in 1947, all but 2% of the population had one in the 90s. In 1998, high-resolution HDTV television was first aired, and by 1998 many were able to use the internet to view videos and television broadcasts as well. The social life and activity level of teens changed drastically between 1995 and 2015 due to technology. In 1995, teens would watch two and a half hours of TV each day, and many enjoyed things such as MTV programming. Most families owned a VCR and would rent movies from Blockbuster, which has all since but gone out of business with one store remaining. 
Still, more than half of teenagers would still find time to talk to their friends on the phone and hang out with others twice a week or more. In 1995, only 11% of teens were considered overweight. By 2005, average media use rose to 6 hours, Netflix began to replace Blockbuster by mailing DVDs to people's homes, and music started to be downloaded from the internet. Teens used the internet more than adults, and this fueled the rise of the MySpace and Facebook era, as well as YouTube. They were still hanging out with friends two hours each day and physically active for at least one hour, but fears for safety make it less common to spend time outside. Bike riding became less common and 16% of teens were overweight. By 2015, the time teenagers spent on various media increased even more, now to over 7 hours each day. Most even have TVs in their rooms. They use their phones to listen to music as well as text, which they do more often than having an actual conversation. Most no longer socialize out of school, which has impacted malls and retailers, targeting them as their main source of income. 28% of the teenage population is now overweight, only 5% don't use the internet, and most who do use it to post their own pictures. Facebook is losing favor in place of Instagram, and apps such as WhatsApp now have almost a billion users. The once cool logo has been replaced by technology, and different social media outlets are now the newest way to show off and be judged as well as hook up with others. As we've seen, the concept of the teenager has developed over time, and how this group has lived and behaved changed accordingly. How do you think things would be different now? If school was not required or cars were still only a luxury, how about if technology was less readily available? Let us know in the comments. Also, be sure to check out our other video called 10 Jobs for Teenagers. Thanks for watching, and as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you next time.